Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Members, the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over and over again, expecting a different result. How many times have we seen these tax increase bills rolled out to us over the past year that we've been in session? Well, here's a plan, we'll do this one. Here's a plan, we'll do this one. Here's a plan, we'll do this one. Have a complete disregard for the citizens. Not one time have I heard anyone say, well, what, what do the citizens think about this? Which is a fact because we saw this bill one hour before it even rolled out here. I didn't have time to read it, didn't have time to put the debate together, didn't have time to send it even on Facebook in today's modern technology and say, hey, what do you guys think about it? I represent you. What do you think? None. No representation. It's taxation without representation. We're losing our minds up here. Are we all really in a big bubble? Do everyone that's up here that's in your ear and in your office here in this capital is typically those that have, are receiving some kind of tax dollar. How about you go ask your grandfather and your grandmother, your aunts, your uncles, your neighbors that are living on $400 or $500 a month Social Security checks and ask them, how do you feel about getting your gas tax raised, your, your diesel tax raised? Or if they're a veteran from World War II where they put cigarettes into their sea rations box and hooked them on cigarettes their entire life, how do you feel about paying more for cigarettes? How do, you pay, how do you feel about paying more if you and your wife like to go to a hotel and just get some time away? How do you like that? Who went and asked? Let me answer that for you. It's a rhetorical question. Nobody. Because if you did, you wouldn't be for this bill. And neither were the voters in 1992 when they passed State Question 640. 1990, we went through the same exact situation. People demanded money. Give me more money right now. I demand it. We didn't ask the taxpayers. We said, oh, oh gosh, I don't want you to be mad at me or vote me out next, next election cycle. I'm just going to stick it to the taxpayers again. That's what you're doing here. Vote yes tonight. That's exactly what you're doing. Because you know why? The voters in 1992, when they stuck it to them in 1990 by a simple majority, by a Democrat-controlled legislature, they went and said, we're going to do an initiative petition and we're going to stop this. And it has worked just like they envisioned it to work. And that is to stop this body from taxing them into oblivion. But we're back here again. What about House Bill 1017, the largest tax increase going to save education? What about the lottery? What about the casinos? Oh, we're going to give more ability to the tribes to, to make money with ball and dice and gambling, but we're going, to get little, we're going to get a pittance from that. We're going to tax them to death on their hotel motel. We're going to stick it to them again. They were sick of it in 1992, and they stopped it with State Question 640. And we get confused up here. Most of you weren't around then, and that's okay. But you obviously don't know how to read on the Internet because the intent of State Question 640 was the normal path, which was this. The House of Representatives passed any tax increase by a simple majority. It goes to the Senate by a simple majority of 25 votes. They pass it out of there. Then the governor signs that bill, and it goes out to a vote of the people, and the people ratify it or turn it down. You know how many, how many tax increases have passed like that since State, court, state Question 640 come into existence? None. And it's for a reason. The people don't want to be taxed to death. And you are not representing the people if you keep sticking it to the taxpayer. So we keep repeating the same thing, coming up here and push this one, push this one, push this one. You know what? We'll, we'll give a little carrot to the other side. We'll convince them, hey, sell your constituents out for this little carrot here. And it's worked. They might get the votes tonight. They might get the votes tonight. So why would the people even trust us with more money? We got the health department that's misappropriated millions and millions of dollars. We had to backfill that with that we could have sent to education or give teachers a pay raise. How about recently, just this morning, I saw an article about the Department of Agriculture. How many other agencies are out there doing the same thing? I bet you there's a bunch, but how are we going to know? Because we don't want to audit. We've cut them too much. We don't want to make them be good stewards of their taxpayer dollars because we don't want to do our job. You know why? how I know we don't want to do our job? Because we keep bringing up tax increases. That keeps us from doing our job because now say, oh, we passed a tax increase. You got plenty of money. Don't worry about it. But guess what? 10 years, 20 years later, we'll be right back here at the well. Well, we need more tax money because that 
wasn't enough. Let's talk about teacher pay raises for a minute. Everyone loves teachers, and I want them to get a pay raise too. My mother was a teacher for over 30 years before she passed away a few years ago. My sister's a teacher. My sister-in-law is a teacher. My oldest sister is getting her teaching degree right now to go into education. But we always get beat up in this legislature. You need to give us a raise. Well, here's a big secret that most people don't know. Oklahoma, Texas, and Arkansas, our surrounding states, only set minimum salary schedules in state law to protect the teachers so the schools don't hose them over. They got to pay them according to their education level and according to their years of service. Did you know that Oklahoma pays a teacher with less than a year's experience $31,600 in base pay? That's not including the almost $7,000 in all their health benefits that they get paid. You know what Texas pays? Less than a year, $28,080. How about Arkansas? I hear about Arkansas all the time. Just this year, they bumped it up from 28000 to 31400 They don't move to 31800 until the fiscal year or calendar year 2019. But they get paid more in Arkansas and Texas. You know why? Because the local school boards, which have the responsibility and authority and ability to give raises, have been giving raises. And you may say, well, we don't have enough money in education. I'm all for giving money more education. I said that backwards. Education, more money. I'm all for it as long as we don't have to raise taxes because we have the money. But Arkansas consolidated their schools. They have half the schools we do. Texas has a budget that's twice our size, but all three states spend 51% of their entire budgets on education. But we want to stick it to the taxpayers instead of making people live with their means. Oh, and by the way, there's a nationwide teacher shortage. It's not just an Oklahoma problem. Go Google it. You can bring the article up from CNN. It's all over the United States, and money is not the number one issue. Maybe if we spanked our kids at home a little bit better with a paddle and made a mind and be good kids, the teachers wouldn't have it so hard in the classroom. But we just want to throw more money at the problem. When I submit to you, it's not the problem. I'm all for it as long as we don't have to raise taxes. Let's talk about our current budget. For simplicity's sake, if we get $100 certified in revenue and they tell, tell us, the legislature, you have $100 to appropriate, $44 of that goes off the top constitutionally. We can't touch it. Goes to an entity. Education gets over a billion dollars of that. Rosen and Bridges gets the rest. Out of that 56% that we have left, $56 we have left, $34 of that goes to common education. The other agencies, all the agencies have to fight over the other $22. How about we go after uh, reforming the off-the-top money instead of raising taxes? It's too much work. How about we stop all the wind credits and all the other credits that are going out the door that we don't even get a return on our investment on because it's easier to raise taxes. We passed a bill, a horrible bill in here the other day to send to a vote of people to let them decide, okay, go ahead and lower the threshold so we can pass taxes on you a lot easier up here. 1017 didn't work. The lottery didn't work. Paramutual betting didn't work. The casinos with this body lied to the people and said, this will fix everything, didn't. We're back here at the well again trying to raise taxes. Represent your people. Not an entity or an organization. Represent your people.